Have you ever wondered how your muscles contract to lift a weight or run a marathon? Let's dive into the fascinating world of muscle contraction. Skeletal muscles, attached to bones by tendons, are responsible for voluntary movements. These muscles are composed of long, cylindrical cells known as muscle fibers. Within these fibers are myofibrils, which are the actual contractile elements. Myofibrils contain repeating units called sarcomeres, the fundamental units of muscle contraction. The sarcomere is packed with two main types of protein filaments, actin and myosin. These filaments play a crucial role in the muscle contraction process. Actin filaments are thin, composed of two strands of actin molecules twisted into a helix. These filaments also have binding sites for myosin heads. Myosin filaments, on the other hand, are thick, consisting of hundreds of myosin molecules. Each myosin molecule has a long tail and a globular head. The heads are essential for binding to actin and performing the power stroke during muscle contraction. In addition to actin and myosin, other proteins like troponin and tropomyosin regulate the interaction between these filaments. Tropomyosin is a long fibrous protein that wraps around actin, blocking the myosin binding sites. Troponin, attached to tropomyosin, has a binding site for calcium ions. The binding of calcium to troponin triggers conformational changes that move tropomyosin away from the binding sites, allowing myosin to interact with actin. The process of muscle contraction is beautifully orchestrated through the sliding filament theory. This theory explains that muscle contraction occurs when actin and myosin filaments slide past each other, shortening the sarcomere. It all starts with a nerve impulse that triggers the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, a specialized endoplasmic reticulum in muscle cells. These calcium ions bind to troponin, causing tropomyosin to move and expose the myosin binding sites on actin. Myosin heads, energized by ATP, attach to these exposed sites, forming cross bridges. The myosin heads then pivot, pulling the actin filaments toward the center of the sarcomere in a motion known as the power stroke. This action shortens the sarcomere, resulting in muscle contraction. After the power stroke, ATP binds to the myosin head, causing it to release the actin filament. The ATP is then hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate, re-energizing the myosin head and preparing it for another cycle of binding and pulling. To maintain muscle contraction, calcium ions must remain available in the sarcoplasm. The release and uptake of calcium are controlled by the sarcoplasmic reticulum and transverse tubules. When a nerve impulse reaches the neuromuscular junction, it causes the release of acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter, into the synaptic cleft. Acetylcholine binds to receptors on the muscle fiber membrane, generating an action potential that travels along the membrane and down the transverse tubules. This action potential triggers the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm. After muscle contraction, calcium ions are actively pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, allowing the muscle to relax. This process is crucial for the regulation of muscle contraction and relaxation cycles. Understanding this mechanism of muscle contraction not only sheds light on the marvel of human movement, but also provides insights into muscle-related disorders and potential therapeutic approaches. Next time you lift a weight or run a mile, remember the incredible molecular machinery at work within your muscles, enabling you to perform these actions with precision and strength. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.